Allison's one of these chart videos. This is called uh, All Upcoming Isekai Anime 2024 to 2025. Let's get it. First up, Tensura Season 4. That's right, 2025. I don't know if a studio has been confirmed. I would prefer it if it's not 8-bit studio because I think that we can get a better adaptation than that. If you're still in here fucking defending the studio for this mediocre adaptation you got for Season 3, I'm questioning if you even like Tensura, bro. Next up. Dad is a hero. Mom is a spirit. I'm a reincarnator. <laughs> what? This is kind of reminding me of Misfit of Demon King Academy. Shin marrying that spirit. I forgot her name. Lena or some shit. But the, the kid. The kid's a reincarnator. As in like... The kid itself is a regressed reincarnation kid already. Interesting. I feel like we should check it out. I feel like we should. 2025, okay, reincarnated as a season a sword season two. This is this was a decent anime. I we've already wa we watched it. Um check out the season one playlist if you haven't. It was back in the day when we were not doing the pausing reactions, but for what I remember. It was decent. I remember Momanda. Amanda, remember with the whip, but I call her Momanda because she's supposed to be like the mom. It was a good show. I would consider it like, I don't think it's like peak. I don't think it's terrible. I don't want to call it mid, but it's probably like a six point something or like a seven point something out of 10, right? Plenty good enough for us to watch and have fun with though. Next up. Oh, ho, ho, Adi Fureta, that's right. Upcoming Monday. Here's the problem, guys. Uh, just a heads up, I don't know when this video is even going live. I'm actually going to farm a lot of videos in advance because Thanksgiving's in Canada is October 14th. And I'm going to be traveling to see my family for a day or so. So I will not be streaming, meaning Arifureta on that day. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how we're going to handle Arifureta. But uh, we'll watch it one way or the other. This is called Sasaki and Peep Season 2. Haven't seen it, sorry. Apocalypse Bringer... Minogra. Uh, it's really hard to judge by anything just based on the cover picture. It looks okay. It looks pretty edgy. Apocalypse Bringer. Maybe we'll check it out. Also, Sasaki and Peeps, I feel like could be a fun enemy that we could actually enjoy, but like nobody has really mentioned it in the community post as well. Looking like middle aged salaryman Isekai world? I don't know. Next. The Red Ranger becomes an adventurer in another world. Wait. So, this is like Power Rangers. This is like Power Rangers? And the Red Ranger... Suddenly, maybe gets reincarnated. Maybe he gets hit by truck also. Maybe he dies, being a hero. Then he becomes an adventurer in the world. January 2025. I feel like this is something that we might enjoy. Yeah, this looks fun. Better than Loser Ranger? Oh, that's some, that's some big talks, man. Spirit Chronicle Season 2. Well, y'all didn't even want to watch Season 1, so we're missing out on that right now as it airs. Oh shit, here we go! We don't have a season, but it does release in 2025. Wrong way to use healing magic was... At this point, I think I'll give it like a minimum 7.5 out of 10. It's a fun anime. It's also like... So different in the tropes of Isekai that you would expect of like a shitty fucking church person, shitty king, you know, shitty friends and blah blah blah. But no, it, it, it's really wholesome actually and it's a well animated show and it's nothing special, but it's also not bad. I don't think it's mid either. I think it's above average. I think this is like a 7 point something out of 10. Next up. Magic Maker. How to create magic in another world. This sounds pretty fun if they actually care about the magic system and build upon it. Something like Witch Hat Atelier and how supposedly that one is supposed to go super sweaty in the magic mechanics. This could be a fun power fantasy or maybe they just kind of gloss over the magic shit and it's just an excuse. And they'll just be creating OP bullshit magic as kids and they pop off. Oh! Too? Yo, we getting campfire cooking in another world? Mr. I use Amazon as my special skill. I love this anime. I realized after watching this anime that an isekai show does not have to be super serious and have to kill a demon lord or something for it to be fun. Nah, 
This is a laid back, enjoyable, just slice of life moments show. Yes, there are some epic moments where because of Fenris, right, this mythical creature that we have pack, pack a contract with, and our slime, right, he is pretty strong. But for the most part, we're just chilling, we're cooking, we're having fun. The season ended with us giving a shower to Fenris. And Fenris has a fucking voice actor that's the same as Ein's Goon from Overlord, right? That's the funniest part. His voice acting is so deep, and Fenris is like... Again, he has a deep voice actor, but he's supposed to be this mythical creature that's supposed to act all, like, wise and cool. But once the food gets cooking, he's just another fucking dog that's panting and wagging his tail. And then we gave him a shower, and it was a pretty funny finale. I enjoyed it a lot. Check out the playlist if you haven't. I'm excited for season two. Skimichi! What? We're getting back to back? Yo, Skimichi just did a two-core season two. We get this shit back 2025? JC staff cooking? Okay. Okay, I am in. I love Skimichi Moon Fantasy. It's... I don't know how to explain the vibes of this show because I think that by having watched Slime first and then watching this because Skimichi came first and Slime took a lot of inspiration from it, I thought that Skimichi was like nothing really special because I've already seen all these different tropes and elements, but it doesn't mean that it's copying. No, it's like the origins, and it's a fun story. Season 2 was really hyped at the end. The whole, like, tournament arc into the whole demon infestation and us fucking shit up. Oh my god. Sophia Bulga, thank you, Omar, for the six months of Prime, man. Y'all remember fucking... Y'all remember Sophia Bulga having seven separate power-ups throughout, like, three episodes, and Makoto being like, Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> I love that shit. It's peak power fantasy. I love it. The story's getting more and more in deep. And I will definitely meet her. Check it out. January coming up. Oh, someday will I be the greatest alchemist? I see an androgynous femboy who's probably the main character. And he's going to have a harem of an elf. And other girls, along with like a spider on the back. Maybe we could check it out. It looks like he's making potions and shit. Oh! Oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh, you follow. Oh, you fuck, you fuck you. Ah, oh, you got me. I thought this was season two. You got me. <laughs> it's the movie. It's the movie. That's right. The Eminem in Shadow. That's right. Slim Shady in Shadow. Lost Echoes, the movie is coming out. Now, a movie coming out usually means that if it's not, like, global release, like, we're gonna have to wait extra time. Right? It's gonna be locked in Japan. Unless it gets leaked. Um, We'll definitely be checking out one way or the other, but it's not a priority, and we're gonna be waiting for Season 2 for sure. <laughs> this anime is actually good. Maybe you could call it mid... But it's not bad. It's an enjoyable slice of life. I enjoyed the four to five episodes that we watched on this channel, but I had to drop it because the interest was waning off. Reborn as a vending machine is getting season two. That is amazing news. It's not a stupid meme anime. It may seem like it, but it's actually pretty well thought out. I enjoyed it, bro. What is this? Oh. Now this! This looks like garbage slop that we would love to eat up. I'm a noble on the brink of ruin. So I might as well try mastering magic. <laughs> okay. I see a dragon. I see a young main character that's probably a reincarnated person. I see two waifus that's probably going to be part of his harem. He's a noble on the brink of ruin. Huh. Maybe his whole family is just washed up and they're about to go bankrupt. So he tried mastering magic and he fucking did it. I don't know. Maybe with the help of this dragon or something. Yeah, stuff like this, right? The longer a title is for an anime, usually that just means that it's shows that we would enjoy because those shows are usually light novel shit regarding power fantasies that this channel fucking loves. Oh shit. Yo, BBL Shoda renewed for season two. Listen. Yeah, it's a sus ass show, right? Of course, there's some weird shit happening with this kid. I know, I know. The short accounts go crazy for this, but it's an amazing anime. The more I think about it, I feel like this just like eight point something. 
Am I crazy for thinking that? Maybe it should be like a 7.9. I don't know. I like the quality of the anime was so fucking good. I think this is a minimum eight. Am I crazy for thinking this? I want to place an eight. Is it a seven or is it an eight? I feel like this is leagues above the animes that I usually rate at sevens. I feel like this is like in the realm of the eights and my standards. Like the overall production value, we're just talking production, not even the plot. The production value was fucking peak, but the plot as well, even though there's nothing special going on. It's such a simple story about this kid who loves magic, who is just exploring magic and just coming across random demons and fucking them up. It was fun, the Assassin's Guild stuff. It was great, and now we have the existence of like a demon, you know, clan or a demon society, different world. I feel like it's going to get even better, and the existence of other princes and princesses. There's more siblings that we haven't even met yet. I feel like this show is truly really good, like minimum 8 out of 10. Next up. Oh, World's Finest Assassin Season 2. So, we've actually seen Season 1. Season 1 content is on Patreon as Patreon exclusive. Meaning if it doesn't win a poll on YouTube, I don't publish it. But since Season 2 is going to drop, I will basically drip feed Season 1 content into the YouTube side. See if it performs well. If it performs well, then we just upload the rest of it and go into Season 2. If it doesn't perform well, then we know that Season 2 is going to flop for us regardless. So I will give it a chance. I will, when it's about time to release Season 2, like how many days out it is. I'll basically do one episode releases, and if they do well, I'll continue. If they don't do well, then there's no point pushing out content that my audience doesn't want. That's how we'll kind of like test the waters with this show. This show is good. This show is good. This is like a seven point something. Season one, we didn't get enough of the whole assassination shit. I remember a battle that was really hype at the end. It was some super OP dude. Was I, I forget there was like the hero that we're trying to find. Yeah, the hero and it was all being ambiguous on who this hero is The guy that we fought maybe he was the hero, but he wasn't there's this whole deceit of like Missiles landing. I, I forget the exact setup. It's been a, it's been many months But I remember a very deceptive way of winning the battle against the quote-unquote hero And then at the end the true hero I think shows up. It's another Shota with the blonde kid. I think right Next up Oh, this is the one. Oh, yeah. This is it. The villainous anime to surpass all villainous animes. The old man reincarnated as a villain. This. Look at the picture. Bro, it's a fucking balding salary man. He's a dude in his 50s who looks so like strict corporate wise. I bet he's a fucking villain during work, right? I bet he's a fucking villain manager, but then he like gets reincarnated into the ultimate as a villainess. And I bet he's going to be so evil. He's going to be so sassy or something like if like, like that's the cover picture looks so fucking funny. So far, it's always been girls being reincarnated as like the girl or like a villain of the show ultimate game. But we getting a fucking a boomer, bro. We're getting a Japanese salary man in his 50s getting reincarnated. This is gonna be fucking peak. Mopseka incoming? Yeah. Talking about another uh, villain uh, show. So, so villain. This isn't. Well. Villainous is a role that exists in Otome games. And this is basically both are Otome games, right? Basically, girls that love playing these games where you are the main girl that can conquer husbandos. Mob Psycho was one of the first Ultimate Game reincarnation shows that I've seen, and it was fucking amazing. Leon Bartofarto. The names are so funny. His entire personality is wicked, and I love it. The way we're shitting on all these people that deserve to be shit on, right? And season one, we have a playlist. Check it out. I will definitely be checking out season two. There's not a date for, you know, this anime, but 2025 is looking good. Next up. The Exiled Heavy Knight knows how to game the system. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be checking this out. 100% we'll be checking this out. Titles like this, you already know, right? It's just right up her alley. 2020, it's looking like... I don't know why he's exiled, but he knows how to fucking cheat the system. And he has a bunch of waifus there along with it. Yep, I'll be watching it. Oh. Nah, this is bait. This dude, Anime World, listen. God bless your soul for giving us videos to farm. But you motherfucker, you put this shit in 2024, bro. You said this is gonna air 2024. You lied to me. Now you're listing it on 2025? Cap! 
I don't fucking, I'm not believing any of you, bro. When um, season two confirmation date comes out, I will farm it from season one up until season two perfectly, just like what we did with ReZero. Same with Overlord. We're waiting for the season five uh, announcement date. I don't care about a movie. It needs to be a new season. Shield Hero. A failed project in my channel. Season 2 was so beyond mid that everyone dropped the show, and even if Season 3 is good, the audience is dead. Fuck me. Season 1. Bro. I will die on this hill. Maybe this is a hot take. Season 1 is a minimum 8 out of 10. Yup. Mm -hmm. Season 1, as its standalone vengeance story, is one of the most peak vengeance stories I've ever had. The payoff was so fucking good. The way that Malty was making me feel mad throughout the entire season was peak. It was so, so good. 8 out of 10 minimum. And then, Turtle Spirit Turtle Arc happened, which the author himself apparently apologized for. Isn't that hilarious? The author of Shield Hero literally said, I apologize for the Spirit Turtle Arc. It is actually so fucking bad and drawn out. Dude, season 2 is so fucking bad. And you know why? Here's my, here's my logic on why Shield Hero was so good in Season 1, but everything else was so bad. Season 1 told us it set up the perfect vengeance story, right? And it did the perfect vengeance story. We got the correction of Malty. She's called Bitch now. But after the vengeance story is done, what do you have left with the show? You have nothing. You have the rest of the world to explore. You set up the different dimensions and different heroes, right? Of different worlds, for sure. But it turns out... The entire audience only watched the show for the vengeance shit. And then on top of that, season two comes out with the mid adaptation. It, it, the season two is like five point something, if anything, bro. It's so fucking bad. The villains are not compelling at all. The villains are literally like Malty was such an amazing villainess. She was. She was brutal. She was vile. She made me feel intense emotions like Rachel from Tower of God. And while I am mad and angry in the episodes, I still appreciate what a performance they put on. Season 2, the bad guys are so fucking mid. It's just this researcher, white-haired dude. He's just evil for the sake of being evil. There's nothing compelling about him. He sucks. And it's not even like a fun vengeance either. He's not- he's- he could never be multi. Season 2 is fucking ass. Even though there's amazing scenes with like fucking Raftalia getting like a job class change, right? Becoming like a samurai shit. That shit should've been so amazing. But the adaptation was so fucking mid. Season 2 was like a 4 point or something out of 10 maybe. 5? I, I don't- I don't want to give this shit like a minimum 6 either. This- this is like a 5 point something, 4 point out of something, bro. Season 2 was so bad. Then Season 3, I hear made a good comeback. But here's the thing with seasonal anime watchers. Once you get filtered out at one specific season, they do not check it out, bro. There is no audience for Shield Hero Season 4, I'm sorry. For me, anyways. And maybe you as an individual love Shield Hero, but this is how content creation works, man. I'm sorry, I wish it wasn't the case. I wish we could watch this, but I've tried Season 3. It was already fucking dead on release for my audience. Next up. Head hunted to another world. I see... What could be a demon lord's castle? I see maybe an elf with big booba, but this guy looks like a salary man. Another isekai main character who is a salary man, corporate worker in Japan that gets summoned? I'm not sure. This looks kind of interesting. The bracelet's shining. He's head hunted to another world. Maybe they head hunt and he looks very confident too. I wonder if they specifically head hunted the salary man because he's so OP. Maybe he's like such a competent worker at his company that they headhunted him. They poached him from another world. Next up. The dark history of the reincarnated villainous. Now, this kind of looks mid. Like, the old man villainous is funny as fuck, right? Mob Seca, it's funny, but this looks like a serious. This looks like a serious villainous show. I've seen so far villainous show that's always just about comedy, making fun of the ultimate game genre, but this looks like a shoujo art style, more serious villainous story. I wonder how stuff like this would do well on my channel. Kakurio, bed and the breakfast for Spirit Season 2. I ain't gonna lie, guys. I don't like Shrine Maiden setup. 
I think that Shrine Maiden environments are something that I don't resonate with. And maybe this isn't Shrine Maiden. Maybe I'm wrong. But I look at this. Is it a hot spring? Is it a Shrine Maiden? I don't know. Look at their clothing they're wearing, right? I, I'm not sure. You guys can... You, you, we haven't even fucking seen Season 1, bro. What the... F no, we've already seen this. We're watching this right now. Loner Life in Another World. If you've only seen one episode or if you're about to see it, don't judge it off of one episode. This anime, check out episode 2 at least, okay? Check out episode 2, then decide if this is for you. By episode 2, you should be very aware of what kind of show it is, and I am all for it. Episode 1 was like, what are we doing, bro? We're collecting fucking mushrooms, and we got our initial, like, introduction set up. Now, we're just memeing around. There's nothing happening. It's just a slice of life show. We're just chilling. And then, season, and then episode 2 happens, and I'm like, oh, I see, I see. I like the whole dialogue and the whole storytelling perspective of the other faction, which is basically the other classmates, right? I enjoyed it. I want to keep watching it. I've been killing slimes <laughs> for 300 years, season 2. Now, if you want to watch, you know, this, we have to watch season 1 first. I haven't seen anyone mention this show, but that's a funny-ass fucking title. It's looking like it's only girls as well, huh? There's no guys in the cover pick. They're basically just like murdering slimes. Poor, it's basically like what Shadow did in Eminence in Shadow 2. It's murdering, making, you know, Rimuru's family go extinct. <laughs> oh boy. The daily life of a middle-aged online S-hopper, shopper, middle-aged online shopper in another world. What did he shop, bro? What did he buy, bro? Is he pre-ordering the kit? What's happening here, dude? What the fuck is his cover picture? And what is that title? The cover picture shows me a middle-aged man holding the hand of a child. And then, and then the title says, he's a shopper. He's a daily life of a middle-aged online shopper in another world. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No diddy. No diddy. Uh-uh. 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 Googly moogly. Yeah, we're watching this. <laughs> we're watching this. <laughs> I'm an s rank behemoth monster. What are we being reincarnated as? As his cat? Is this Inukai-san's cat instead of dog? Holy shit, those titties are massive. <laughs> yeah, we'll be watching this. <laughs> we'll, we'll be watching this. <laughs> Next up. Mushoku Tensei! Is it really 2025? I didn't realize it was that close. I, 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 I thought we would need to wait like another year or so. Really? Is he capping? Am I, am I, am I getting baited? Did they say a year? I mean, I saw season three announcement, but did we get a year? <laughs> also, Paul, the thumbnail is so fucking troll. This is season two fucking thumbnail. <laughs> this is season two fucking thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, of course we'll be checking it out. Of course we will. Oh? This is interesting. A wild last boss appeared. Uh, I can't. The art style looks interesting. It looks good, but I can't really tell what this is about. Is this a girl that's role playing as the last boss, like Yuki in Roshitere right now? Is this supposed to be like a funny comedy anime? Is it a serious battle anime? The art looks amazing. I I'm tempted. I want to know what more it's about. And that's it. There's all the upcoming Isekai anime from 2024 to 2025. Please go give Mr. Anime World a like on the video. Check out his channel if you haven't. Here's a link. And I'll see you next time, guys.